now that we have discussed basic emotions, let us understand things from two, three perspectives. One, we now know that each basic emotion is distinctly expressed on the face and we also know that because these are basic emotions, they so there is a possibility of many of these emotions to be considered as universal expressions. Universal expressions would mean that irrespective of the culture, the facial expression would by and large remain the same. Okay. So, these six basic emotions which we finally arrived at towards the end of our uh, second lecture, happiness, sadness, fear, anger, surprise and disgust. Okay. These six basic emotions, uh, the facial expressions that represent these uh, emotions, they remain the same across the culture. So, if there is universality of expression, how do we learn it? Okay. Is it that we are biologically programmed to uh, know, uh, express these ex uh, emotions? How does this happen? Let us now understand how an infant, human infant learns to express through face. Lewis proposed a developmental theory suggesting that infants are basically endowed with the inborn cognitive capacity to have a subset of emotions such as joy, sadness, fear, anger, surprise and disgust. Okay. So, six basic emotions that we were referring to, Lewis developmental theory says that fine. Uh, human infants, they already have this inborn cognitive capacity. Okay. So, what happens? Now, this theory further says that to attain the remaining emotions, okay, which happens during uh, two cognitive developments, first one acquires the self concept, who am I? Okay. So, that is the acquisition of the self concept and two, acquisitions of standard rules and goals of the society in which the individual is living, is growing up. Okay. So, these standards, rules and goals are called SRGs. Okay. So, Lewis's developmental theory says that we acquire one, our concept of the self, who am I and two, after I acquire who am I, I also acquire the standards, rules and goals of my society. So, that would mean that after acquiring the concept of the self, I also understand what my society expects out of me. For example, if you think of emotions like envy, okay, you are jealous of someone, empathy, embarrassment, pride, shame. Now, these emotions cannot be experienced if you do not realize your position with respect to others. Okay. So, unless I experience who am I? Okay, I acquire this very ability, I understand who I am, I cannot be jealous of somebody else. Okay, because self and the non-self, the other self, okay, these two things I will have to first establish within me and once I establish uh, this within me, then only I can have the sense of envy, I can develop jealousy. If I have a sense of pride, okay, then also I need to understand my position in my society and then I understand that fine the whatever I have acquired is something that the society would you know really appreciate and this would fill me with a sense of pride. Now, this implies that the twofold cognitive developments are not needed for experiencing and expressing the basic emotions. Now, basic emotions they surface before achievement of the self consciousness 
and certain other type of emotions such as embarrassment, envy and empathy, they may emerge before the integration of the moral system. Okay. So, this is an interesting uh, you know, explanation of how infants uh, they develop how to express themselves. Okay. Now, it is intricate to draw the discrete negative expression from certain uh, you know, expressions of the child, especially uh, say if you are looking at the crying bout of an infant. And if you want to demarcate which expression this is, it is very difficult. Now, infants usually have been found to uh, know, cry in all negative situations, okay. but when you look at uh, know, their uh, facial expression while they cry, okay, you will come across a very interesting pattern. Now, look at this very expression. What you see is lowering of the eyebrows, corners of the lips which gets pulled to a side and opening of the mouth and of course, this leads to raising of the cheek. Now, crying face has a mixed feature of anger and distress. Okay. Anger in adults you will consider this to be a basic emotion. Okay. Similarly, uh, disgust will have a different expression. Here, distress and anger both of them they mix up, okay, although the child is trying to uh, know, express the feeling, the negative feeling. Now, depending on certain situations, the child might come forward with different sets of expressions. Okay, you start looking from the bottom, the expression represents weak cry, then the moderate cry, another form of moderate cry and then finally, the strong cry. Okay. So, similarly, you can have uh, no expression uh, of happiness, where muscle contraction takes place near the eyes and there is an upward liftment of, uh, liftment of the cheek. Very interestingly, Ekman uh, has made a very interesting distinction between the joyful and the non-joyful smile. So, it is not that if you smile you are happy, there could be a non-happiness uh, induced smile. Okay. So, that is a distinction that Ekman has made. Now, again uh, the way we were looking at crying, look at uh, smile right from very strong smile to minimal smile, again strong smile, another format of a strong smile and you realize that the expressions are very, very different. So, drawing a, a common line of distinction is extremely difficult okay, if you look at the uh, expressions of the infants. Now, uh, look at distress, both these images they represent distress, whereas okay, you can understand that the facial expression is not exactly the same discomfort for instance, comfort for instance and now see uh, pleasure. Okay. There is a uh, no whole lot of uh, difference if you look at the expressions of human infants. Now, uh, because a growing child, an infant will have a very, very close interaction with the mother. So, how does uh, the child understand the expression of the mother? Okay, if you right now what we were doing is that we were looking at the expressions of the infant. Now, we are trying to say that although this human baby is in the state of infancy, how does he or she understand the expression of uh, his or her mother? It has been realized okay, that eyes and mouth, these are the two primary locations uh, where the children one to two month old infants they focus when they look at their mothers. Okay. And of course, when they look at their uh, fathers also, they look at only these two uh, areas in the face, the eyes and the mouth. Look at this video. Now, look here, the one month old child is looking at the mother's face and then you see right from the start point how the eye fixation changes and finally, goes and sticks at some point. In the other image, you see a two month old child looking at the father and then you see right from the start point how the fixation point changes and finally, it stops somewhere. Now, this is how the infants they look at their parents. Bridges proposed that the newly born human babies, uh, they have undifferentiated hum, uh, emotional expressions, which with the ex, uh, what you call passage of time gets further differentiated. So, according to Bridges model, at the time of birth, child has nothing but only general level of excitement which by the end of second or third month converts into distress and delight. 
okay. And this further by the end of the six month, the child uh, learns how to uh, express anger, disgust and fear, which basically is further uh, no expansion from the expression of distress. Now, let us understand how emotion and memory they work in the case of children. Uh, before uh, starting our discussion on uh, emotion, we did talk about memory and there also we said that personal significance plays a very important role. Now that emotions which is likely to have you no know, more of a personal significance, so how emotion and memory both will work together in the case of human children. Now between the age of uh, 18 to 36 months, children they use emotional words in their conversations. By the time they are 3 years old, they can identify emotions and situations that provoke emotions. In the fourth year, they can accurately match the basic emotions with the correct corresponding facial expression. Okay. And by the time they are 6 years old, okay, they adapt to interpreting these emotional expressions. Now, emotional memories, they mostly involve the attainment and blocking of personal goals in children as well as in adults. Okay. You remember Zygarnik's uh, no, uh, effect that we talked about in uh, memory and the explanation that uh, Datta and Kanungo had given, that it is uh, basically the pleasant and the unpleasant experience, okay, which will uh, help you recollect your uh, events, the memory of the event rather than whether you were able to complete it or it was not completed. It is similar to this type of an explanation, which says that you have a, uh, uh, fixed certain goals for yourself, whether you are a child or you are an adult. What is the degree of happiness, how delighted you are when you attain the goal okay? or how sad or angry you become when the goal that you are trying to achieve is blocked. So, it is the attainment or the blockage. Okay. So, your movement towards the personal goal that becomes extremely important. Okay. And therefore, when you start recollecting things from your experience, okay, so emotion driven memory would largely you know, have either the issues related to attainment or episodes related to blockage of uh, the personal goals. Children of course, they have a better recall of uh, emotional behavior as compared to emotional levels and non-emotional behaviors. Uh, for example, you know the memory for uh, receiving a gift from one of the parents will be better. Okay. If you have gone for an outing somewhere, you will have a better recall of that very event. So, emotional behavior will always have a better recall in case of children compared to when you simply use the word the levels of the emotion. or if you compare between recollection of uh, non-emotional behavior versus emotional behavior, children by default will always have a better recall of emotional behavior. Now, what uh, we have discussed till now is that as an infant you grow, as an infant you are endowed with certain capacity to uh, acquire certain uh, uh, emotional expressions. You also look at your parents, you learn how to express yourself, but is it that entire facial expression is only what you call uh, parent centric or is it that there is a, uh, an influence even of the society. Okay. Of course, we have uh, talked about you no know, acquisition of SRGs, okay. but besides SRGs, say for instance, if you learn how to express anger. Okay. Expression of anger is one aspect, how much to be angry, how to express it. Okay. Is it that uh, we differ or is it that we have a source from where we learn or is it that we are biologically endowed with that capability. Look at this very ad, okay. it is of course an ad of a product, but we are looking at how human children they imitate. Look at this ad. बेटो मम्मी ने बोला था ना दीवारें खराब मत करना सुनते नहीं हो तुम आपसे भी शुक्लांकल ने कहा था कि बंगला बनवाते समय डॉक्टर फिक्सिट से वाटर प्रूफिंग जरूर करवा लेना ये छत की आला देखिए हाँ और ये बाथरूम देखा आपने और ये सब क्या है क्या है ये सब सुनते नहीं हो What did you see in this very video? 
first the father shouted at the child okay and the child reverted back exactly the way the father had expressed his anger okay the reason i picked up this very ad was the expression that the child has learned to uh, you know show is this is exactly the same that he learned from his father so there is a strong possibility that the way human children they express themselves might be you know guided by the source okay the model whom he or she is trying to imitate uh, from the environment uh, the other example would be when you look at uh, you know the beauty contest where you see that all the winners okay unequivocally they would express the same way look at uh, this very video this is the expression of feelings when sushmita sen won miss universe in 1994 you must have watched many female winners expressing their emotions the same way and this actually represents that how the, the culture actually influences your expression of emotion you saw uh, sushmita sen no finally uh, what she did was she does just you know tried to uh, hide her uh, part of the face okay uh, using her uh, hands and this was basically you know uh, joy of an ultimate order now is it that uh, you know few models express themselves like that because susmita shain's episode took place long back i was uh, you know searching for uh, the beauty contest winners how they express themselves okay Uh, look at uh, one of the recent expressions okay where miss world 2014 who is from south africa when she won the medal how did she express herself it matches no the way susmita shain was expressing herself now let us go little back no 2012 miss world winner who was from china now you have models from india china south africa all of them expressing themselves the same way so this is a strong indicator the way we saw in the case of ad where the son was you know imitating expressing the way the father expressed here you find that irrespective of the event and irrespective of the cultural background people in one given profession they express themselves in the same way so this is indeed very interesting now this shows two things one the fact that we acquire certain uh, you know uh, rules certain guidelines from our uh, environment that that is what is uh, you know levis's development theory second irrespective of our culture it is uh, the people around us from whom we learn through the process of imitation imitation uh, you know uh, we had discussed when we were talking about learning you know that we select role models and then we imitate the our models okay the child in the ad actually imitated the father okay but in the process of imitation he also learned how to express his uh, you know anger and disgust second case irrespective of the cultural background from where you are okay might be that you have seen that largely the winners okay in one uh, situation in one profession they express themselves the same way so every time when you win a uh, uh, miss world competition okay irrespective of the cultural background irrespective of the difference in the srg that levis was talking about we express ourselves the same way okay so this shows you know uh, that uh, how human beings right from the state of infancy till when they grow up and they then they move ahead in the profession how they learn to express themselves okay so we'll end our uh, third lecture here in the next lecture we will be talking about specifically the influence of culture on emotional expression